So, T.S. Eliot, another American artist and literary critic. Uh, unlike Ezra Pound, uh, who used to translate the material and the voices coming from uh, the past, T.S. Eliot preferred quotations. The difference between these forms, translation on one hand and quotation on the other, is a way to understand the basic differences between uh, Ezra Pound and T.S. Eliot. And uh, through them, uh, um, through translation and quotation, uh, to think about uh, the possible relations uh, um, of modern poetry to the literature of the past, because we do know that what's new, what's really modern, in the sense that modus odiernus, that is, the way we do things today, um, and uh, the idea of uh, cutting uh, away uh, tradition, uh, tradition, that is, this uh, kind of uh, father-to-son transmission of uh, classical literature, um, so translation and quotation are two ways uh, of uh, relating oneself to the past. Ezra Pound aims at making it all new. This is a quotation from Ezra Pound. Pound wanted to make the past new. He wanted to make uh, the past a living thing. So he translated the past. Um, a translated phrase, even from uh, a faraway culture, in space and time, take uh, uh, an ancient Chinese um, phrase translated into modern terms, has to be perceived as alive, as modern, as contemporary. So, as Rapal aims at the caring culture to us, as a kind of living thing, a living thing. And I, I would say an immediate thing, because um, he doesn't even want to be a medium between us and the past. The reader has to be in touch with the past as uh, if it were a living thing, a contemporary thing, which is there, it's there with us. The past, has to be renewed uh, in translation and, and has to be communicated uh, in modern terms. So the past has to be re-embodied and reshaped continuously um, over and over, even in the future. So we have uh, translation. Now, going to T.S. Eliot's uh, relation to the past. Uh, and she wrote, uh, he wrote an essay, Tradition and Individual Talent. So um, his main purpose was to investigate the way uh, um, a modern talent, a contemporary talent, has to deal with uh, what has already been said and done. Um, maybe because both Eliot and Pound, uh, coming from the United States, uh, uh, coming to Europe, uh, had to find their place in a complex uh, um, a tradition. Uh, you know, how would uh, T.S. Eliot uh, relate himself to John Milton, to Dante, to Homer, to Virgil, uh, that is, to tradition? What is a quotation? In a way, uh, when somebody quotes somebody else, uh, they show a deference, a respect uh, to the past, to what has been said and written. But on the other hand, a quotation may also imply some kind of violation of it. When we quote someone, uh, we uh, mean either to honor this person or to make some kind of mockery or to mock them. Okay, so Ezra Pound translated, T.S. Eliot quoted. 
T.S. Eliot, he was born uh, in Missouri, so in the U.S. in uh, 1888. He studied at uh, Harvard University and in uh, 1910 he moved to Paris, uh, then to England in uh, 1914. He met uh, uh, many uh, artists and writers uh, uh, and in particular he met uh, Ezra Pound in London and Ezra Pound uh, uh, helped him uh, uh, publish uh, his works, especially The Wasteland. Uh, in uh, 1927, that is before Eliot converted to the Anglic Anglican religion, um, Eliot became a British citizen and published his masterpiece, The Wasteland, um, which dates back to uh, 1922. He converted to Anglican religion after writing the Wasteland, and all of a sudden we have uh, The Hollow Man, Ash Wednesday, Murder in the Cathedral, uh, that is works inspired by his uh, new contact with God, with transcendency. So it's a new man. T.S. Eliot became a new man after his conversion, but he is remembered um, for the wasteland, which was um, uh, a real manifesto of uh, modern um, reality, uh, the, after, the aftermath of uh, World War I. T.S. Eliot wanted to represent the spiritual sterility of the modern world before he converted to Anglicanism through a constant comparison with classical voices. This is what he called the mythical method. Um, you know, uh, Edward says, uh, uh, we are faced with uh, a panorama of futility, of sterility, a panorama of some kind of wasteland. So it is meaningless. It is absurd, we would say. It's, uh, there's no way we can find an order, a meaning, uh, some kind of sense in this nonsensical world, which is modern world. The only way we can find a way, uh, we can find our way to understand reality is making a constant comparison with what used to be Europe, uh, a mythical past, uh, tradition, and what is now the modern world. This is the mythical method. And T.S. Eliot praised James Joyce for the way he uh, wrote and then published Ulysses, which from the very title uh, reminds us of uh, uh, Homer's Odyssey. Um, what, what, does, what did uh, Joyce do? He followed uh, the, the timeline, the storyline of uh, Homer's Odyssey, even the, uh, the chapters, the 18th chapters of uh, Homer's Odyssey are followed in uh, Ulysses, but we don't find um, Ulysses, Penelope, Telemachus, we find modern, the modern versions of Ulysses, Penelope, and Telemachus, which are uh, Leopold Bloom, Molly Bloom, and Stephen Dedalus. Um, Ulysses was one day in Dublin, but it resembles step by step Homer's Odyssey. So Eliot said, uh, we instead of using instead of using the narrative method. We now use the mythical method, constant comparison between a mythical past and a sterile, meaningless, absurd present. Another poetic method which Eliot used, and he borrowed that from Ezra Pound, was the objective correlative, uh, that is, in order to, um, to get the impression of an emotion, um, there's no need to say what I feel. 
There's no need to present what I feel, but I have to use a set of objects, an image, as Ezra Pound would have said, an image, a concrete image, which makes me think, which makes the reader think of that emotion and only that. So it's the correlative of an emotion. An emotion has to be related to an object, Pound would say to an image, to a concrete image. Ungaretti and Montale in Italy will make a, a heavy use of uh, the objective correlative. So a set of objects, images, references evoke one emotion and only that emotion. Um, so the objective correlative derives from uh, Ezra Pound's lesson. I would like to quote Pound. He said, literature is language charged with meaning. Language has to evoke an image directly, the direct treatment of the thing, whether subjective or objective. Of course, a subjective thing is an emotion, an objective thing is something outside uh, the, the artist, the author. And um, another important feature of this poetic compression. You don't have to use any extra word that does not really contribute to the representation of the image, which in itself is related to one emotion. You don't have to use any extra word, not a single adjective which does not reveal something. Okay, and we may quote um, Ezra Pound's In a Station of a Metro. It's just a two-line poem in the uh, form of a haiku-like poem, which Pound uh, borrowed from the Chinese and Japanese um, literature, a two-line poem um, which gives uh, the image of concrete objects, faces, and the petals, the wet petals on a bow. This is in a station of uh, the metro. As regards the role of the poet, artist, author, narrator, it depends if it's a poetry or prose, T.S. Eliot stated that the poet's task is not to say, but to show, not to present, but to represent. This is what we may define as the impersonality of the artist. Um, but why uh, do we have all this? Because there had been the end of the positivistic faith in science and progress. Reality now has no shape, no order, unless you compare it to the order and the meaning of a mythical past.